Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. I'm dressed in vintage Moschino jeans uh, and a jacket from the 90s. This is gorgeousness galore. This is when Franco was still kicking ass. And uh, I don't know if this was just like right after he passed or he was still alive, but this is one of his designs for sure. So, and of course, the love of my life for now, for now, because you know how it is. I have to share my love between all my Chanel bags. So I can't say that this is like, you know, I love all of them the same. I can't. They're like my children. I love all of them just the same. But today, this little baby's with us for a reason. And we'll get to it in a second. We're doing channel talk. So sit down, grab a coffee, tea. Uh, um, for those of you who have seen Working Girl with uh, Harrison Ford, Sigourney Weaver, and uh, Melanie Griffith, and Joan Cusack, uh, you will remember my favorite part of that movie is when she says, coffee, tea, me. <laughs> anyway, okay, moving on. So, um, Joe, wait, are we going to do Joe? Okay, let's do Joe. J Joe, Joe uh, Dresden uh, on my Rick Owens cargo sandal uh, review. By the way, I like, you know, I have this like the Chanel hair clip in here, a different one. Oh, by the way, there's going to be an update on the hair clip, on the hair pin. This is the hair clip. Um, I'm doing this kind of 90s. It could be kind of, I don't know. I wouldn't dare say Club Kids because I don't I do not do the Club Kid makeup. Maybe I, one day I should do like a Club Kid makeup uh, thing, you know, just to reminisce. God, I love those days. Anyway, okay, sorry. I watch these reviews and it makes me motivated because I can't afford none of this shit on my college budget. You know, you always got to poker things out. On my college budget, I couldn't afford anything either. But I waited for sales and... If I really love the piece, super addicted to it, you better believe it, Busta. I was there 7 in the morning, 8 in the morning, no matter what time I had to be there to be first in line to get a piece. I know it sounds super superficial, but I love material things. What are you going to do? So there are there are always options. There's always possibilities. And now, also, thank God, we have um, the internet, a lot of secondhand uh, shops as well. Things are obtainable. When I hunt down a lot of vintage pieces, and I'm a lot into vintage, so... It's not just about the money. You have the money, let's just buy it. No, you have to hunt stuff down as well. It's not about the money. What I have is patience. Sometimes it takes me years to find a piece that, that, I, that I know I want, but it's, it's a piece from the 70s, the 80s, the 60s, the 90s, whatever have you, and it's that patience that is needed. And, um, it, and actually that time that, that you spend with that patience will also show you if you really truly want that piece or not. Because then after two years pass or one year, pa one, years, one year has passed and you finally find that, you'll know, like, does your heart still skip a beat when you see it? If yes, then buy it. If not, you know you shouldn't have bought it in the first place when it was new, full price. So that's, uh, you know, uh, Miyoko Ishimatsu, Ishimatsu. Uh, Miyoko-san, hello. Uh, how are you doing, sweetie? Um, this is a question uh, about fashion. How do you sniff out the best quality pieces from luxury brands? Ah, let's see. Um, now, I answered in the comment sections, but just for you guys also to... Let's see, how do we... It's a very, very complex question because there are so many things to take in consideration. You have to... Um, you need a certain sensitivity to aesthetics, to, to shapes, forms, materials, colors, combination of things. Um, and then you have to also know the heritage and the history of a brand. And then you also have to know a lot about the times you live in, socially speaking and aesthetically speaking. Oh, everything's falling down here. Um, because you're going to have to use all that knowledge to figure out what is really iconic, what is there to stay, and what is there to not stay. I wanted to rhyme it with something, but I couldn't find a rhyme. Um, so it's it's kind of... I'm usually at the point right now, like for me, it's a bit harder to, f to discover really like up-and-coming new brands. That's why I have 
uh, younger generations around me who who talk about their idols, their icons, and uh, there's a beautiful interaction between us because I bring to the table a lot of knowledge uh, from the past. And so a lot of the, the kids, for example, that talk to me, they're like, oh, Deco, well, this is an amazing piece. And then I say, yeah, but do you know where it comes from? Do you know what inspiration was? No, because the designers are hiding the fact that they stole the idea one-to-one -one from somebody else or from something else, but they're not going to tell you that because they want a younger generation to idolize them. But that's what I mentioned on my videos. We have the internet. We have the power of Googling whatever the heck we want to Google, and then we find really what is what, what comes from where. And the more knowledge you have, the more power you have. But however... I notice the differences, the nuances, the, the subtleties of new and up and coming brands. And it's amazing when they get presented to me and I get to see them. And, and then I see the innovation. I see what they're connecting to uh, as far as the past designers and, and styles go. But I also see kind of new paths opening up in Horizons. That's why uh, young generations are super important. The kids today are super important. They always will be, always have been and always will be. And don't you forget, kids, one day you're not going to be kids no more. There's going to be other generations after you, and you're going to have that confrontation as well. You can decide what to make of it. Either you're going to be positive about it or negative about it. I choose to be positive because there's so much to learn from youth. And um, so anyway, this is off the topic now. But, you know, to me personally, finding out pieces that I consider worthy of archiving and um, cataloging in, in the fashion bunker, uh, those are pieces that I, I know of through through past and through history. Uh, I also do have, you know, I, I when, when Bernard Wilhelm just came out with his collections, and then, I mean, around 2006, I started kind of collecting, 2003, but that was already, I bought it already used, so like new, new piece, 2006 uh, or seven. He was really new back then. Now he's already kind of obsolete and forgotten in a way. Henrik Vipskov as well is kind of one of those designers that not many people talk about anymore nowadays. Abirato. Abirato is an amazing brand. doesn't exist anymore. But it was in freaking incredible. And I have some pieces from them. Blitz Blitz, this kind of designer duo. They, they have broken up since then. But they have these... I have some pieces in the fashion market. So I do discover young talents. And I do collect those pieces as well. But But they have to have something that speaks to me on a level that nothing that I already know of speaks to me. You see, that's how I figure out the new stuff. The old stuff, brands already exist, it all depends on the magic, how they talk to me, how the materials are, how the aesthetics are. Do they tell me a story? What sort of story do they tell? How dramatic is it? Does my head play a movie when I see a piece? You know, usually when I see a piece I really love, I have a whole movie playing in, in my head about it. And that's when I know that's a piece that I have to archive in the fashion bunker. When, when that movie is in my head and I'm directing it and I see the beginning, the end, and the middle. There. Moving on. Um, Anna Cool Whip. Anna Cool Whip on my Anna Cool Whip. How you doing, sweetie? Buckle up. It's going to get bumpy. On my French lessons, uh, how to pronounce uh, French uh, designer brands correctly uh, with Paul. Uh, on the full length version of the video on all of the brands that we listed, which is over 20 brands, I think. And the video was around 40 minutes long. You can check it out in the description box down below. Um, Anna Cool Whip says, this could have been a two minute video. Really? Okay, well, let's talk about time. And here's the buckle up part. Anna, my dear, two minutes make, or 40 minutes, any second makes the world of a difference. Could you imagine if your parents, while they were having the sex that conceived you, had they had their orgasm, Two minutes prior to the time when they actually had their orgasm, when you were conceived, could you imagine who would have been writing this comment right now? It wouldn't have been you, girl. It would have been that somebody else. Why? Because those two minutes or two seconds make the world of a difference. And trust you me, if I post a video that is 40 minutes long, there's a very specific and needed reason to do so. 
On the other hand, however, I did split up that video also in a lot of short videos per brand. So if somebody's interested in just one specific brand, they could check that one out. Those videos are much shorter. Some of them are, lo are a little longer, less than a minute long. Some are around two minutes long. So to each his own, I say. But Anna, I am extremely grateful that your parents did have the orgasm when they did and that you are indeed here alive and you could grace us with your beautiful, magnificent soul and presence. Big kiss to you, sweetie. Edward, my dear. Edward Gurangol. Edward Gurangol. How are you doing, sweetie? On my uh, shopping in Venice, like my, I think the Chanel Venice bag unboxing, you saw me walking through Venice and you saw me with the shopping bags and you said the footage from Venice showing you with different shopping bags included one that says Pierre Cardin. My only comment, what the, and then dot, 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 dot. Well, Edward, my dear, now uh, this is, uh, this is an interesting topic. I answered in the comment sections, but I'm answering you here as well. You know, this is the thing. Um, Drum roll. I will be making a video, uh, Pierre Cardin Exposed. And if you really want to see it, thumb up this video to give me a thumbs up on going and making it because it takes a bit of research and quite a bit of time to prepare it. But I'm willing to do so. And let me just tell you why. A lot of people today believe that Pierre Cardin is uh, literally a brand you find in the cheapest stores. It's just a name splattered over cheap products. Uh, yes, most of the times that is the case. There's a reason for that. A very interesting reason that is rooted way back in the past, in the 60s even. Um, but mind you, the Pierre Cadan that I shop for is not the Pierre Cadan that sells licenses to use his name by other brands. I will not say more, but... What I will say is, Pierre Cardin, who is now, what, 95, 96 years old, is one of the last living, if not the last living, fashion, design, and architect legend of the world. And I'm, we're talking last living. So, so thumb up this video if you want to see this uh, pure Pierre Cardin exposed video. Coming soon, if you like the idea. Moving on. Uh, love is who I am. Hello, love is who I am. How are you doing, sweetie? Um, uh, right. Good morning, beloved. Visiting Saks yesterday, I saw the current Chanel gift box sets. The number five duo set contained number five eau de parfum and an atomizer. And for your next Q&A, if you could create a Chanel gift box set, what would yours look like? Wow, this is an amazing question. And it's super, super curious. I mean, it makes me like, it makes, first of all, I have like 3 billion ideas how a Chanel gift box set should look like. First and foremost, Chanel, if you're listening, take a pen and pencil and write this down, girl. First and foremost, um, I would not put in a gift box set just stuff that you already have. I would produce a piece just for the gift box set. Is that a thought for you, Chanel? I know it costs a bit of money, but that's amazing because then people want to collect it. Even more people would buy it. Usually Chanel is the only brand, one of the few brands, that when they make a gift box set, they make it cost more. It's not like you get something for free together with the fragrance, like you get the two showers. Just, no, you pay more. <laughs> you just Basically what you get for free is a carton or cardboard box to place within it the other products. But what I would see in my uh, gift uh, set would be Special atomizers, vaporize, just like Christian Dior did with the Sauvage with the 7.5 milliliter travels. Oh, gorgeous. Now that's something Chanel should do. So could you imagine, another love of my life, um, 31 uh, Rue Cambon, 75 milliliter, eau de toilette. Now, not eau de parfum, forget the eau de parfums, just eau de toilettes. Could you imagine like purchasing, let's say, let's make it a big thing. I know the Les Exclusives don't even go there with like Christmas box sets or whatever, holiday gift box sets, but... You buy the 200 ml of 31 Rue Cambon, and then you get, this would be, ah, I would be like, I pee my pants just thinking about it. You get literally like a 10, like a 10 mil atomizer spray that's refillable. Ha! Huh. So the 200 milliliter bottle, uh, and then you get the 10 ml, like gorgeous in glass. I know they could make it look, you know how Chanel can make their designs look like to die for. You just faint and you're dead. That's it. 
<laughs> you're a goner. That's how beautiful they could make it be. And then you get that little thing and you, you know, pump out the, from the 200 ml, peu a peu, you know, bit by bit, the, uh, the liquid, you could travel with it. But in the course, even, you know, Christian Dior, the Privé line, you could buy the little uh, refillable, but I mean, they're super expensive, they're packaged and like that, but you can buy them as separates and extras. Now I'm talking about a, a gift package. That's what I would see. Uh, another uh, gift box set by Chanel uh, for me would be incredible to see. Again, we're talking 7.5 ml, this time 7.5 ml, uh, like a set containing the eau de toilette spray, and then next to it, uh, the eau de parfum. Then we could have uh, l'eau, we could have eau première, and the pure parfum, and all of them is 7.5 ml. It would cost shitloads, I know, but to have them all in the same like bottles, not in all these different... What annoys me about Chanel Number no. 5 is that they all have like different shapes. So the eau de toilette has this shape, the eau de parfum, and the l'eau, and the eau première have the other shape, and then the parfum is much smaller. So it's, it's like too complex. I would all like to have them all together, all as the spray size of the parfum, so that would make the other ones match up the same size as the, other, as the pure parfum, so they're all the same, that'd be so beautiful, and then maybe even make them refillable. That, or on another note, I would definitely also do perhaps um, like a mix and match option. I would love to see a box set where you could, um, let's say, like you got to buy a certain minimum and then you choose the last thing for free. Like, let's say you got to buy two perfumes and they give you a third one as a special, like, I don't know, the smallest size, 35 ml for free. That would be like beautiful. So let's say you buy number 19, uh, Eau de Parfum, 100 ml, and Coco, uh, Eau de Parfum, 100 ml, and then you get to choose 100, and then you get to choose an Eau de Parfum, 35 ml of whichever one you want. Let's say it could be uh, Coco Noir, or it could be L'eau, but well, that's an Eau de Toilette though, uh, Eau Première, and then you get that one as a little extra for free. But I like the flexibility so that the kind of customer gets to choose what they want. Uh, I think that that would make it even more um, sellable. You know what I mean? But of course, it's more work for Chanel. So probably they just want to go the cheap route. In a lot of countries, they don't even do really box sets. So they're just so self, you know, they know that they're going to sell either way. So that's a couple of ideas. Of course, I have more, but we don't have the time right now. Moving on to J-Love. How you doing, J-Love, sweetie? Uh, this is a long one. Let's read it quickly. I love you. You're fantastic. I love you too, Jay. Thank you so much. Love my jumbo too. Ah, here we come to the jumbo. So uh, J-Love loves his jumbo, but I'm jealous of yours. Mine is a black lambskin silver double flap, but I wish I had gotten the single flap because rumor has it, everyone says the single flap chains are longer. It pisses me off though, because people think it's a fake because when I wear it double chained, it sits super high because I'm a little chubby, uh, unlike on a petite woman where it comes much lower. Uh, on me, it looks more like a medium. Have you ever asked or know if Chanel will add more chain links to customize the dimensions? Because I wouldn't even know where to go to have that done. You're amazing. Thank you so much, sweetie. No, they do not do that. They will not do that. They will not make anything customizable. The only thing they do do, and if you want to check that out, check out my Chanel bag drama, my Chanel broken bag drama in the description, uh, saga in the description box down below. Because if you check that out, you will notice uh, that <laughs> I sent it for repairs. The chain... It came, the chain came back shortened, six centimeters. Not because I wanted it. So they do customize it if it's in their interest, if they just want to quickly solve a problem, disgusting way of working. It took me half a year to get a voucher back, not even my money back for the damage that I have done to the bag. Long story short, check it out in the description box down below. But no, on another note, you should be happy your chain is shorter. I'm not happy, my chain is too long. It always hits me when I wear a crossbody on my hip. And since this is a denim a material, I'm, and, and if it's like laying on my hip when I walk, it always rubs off my hip. And I really don't like it rubbing off my hip because I have the feeling that it's gonna kind of damage the, 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 the material, or it's gonna get lighter, it's gonna change the color. So I wanna wear my bags. The lowest I wanna wear them is right above the hip. So when I'm walking, they never rub out. They just stay put and still on my clothes. So indeed, I am wearing this one always as the double chain like that. I'm not wearing a crossbody anymore. And if I do wear a crossbody, and I showed that in, in the, the review of this bag, so you could check that also out in the description box down below, the link to the review of this bag. When I do wear it crossbody, I put the chain here, and literally, so it's, it's 
kind of as it is crossbody, then I just kind of always hold it here. I protect it always under my armpit. So I have the chain hanging down, I wear it like that. Otherwise, yes, I've come to conclusion that I don't care if people think this is a feminine way of wearing a bag. I don't think so. I'm going to wear it this way because I like it this way. So there you have it, world. And also, those people that have been asking, when am I going to start reviewing male stuff? Uh... I'm reviewing human being creations, creations that human beings have made for other human beings. There is no such thing as gender when it comes to beautiful objects. Get that into your brains. J Love wants to know, another question. Sorry, typing lots, haha. When you wear it crossbody, do you prefer it through the back loops or the front loops, the chain? I always pass it through the front loops because I like the look better, but I feel like it messed up the Mademoiselle C lock, and now my computer is off. Great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have the feeling it messed up the Mademoiselle C lock, which is here, wearing it through the uh, front loops, which are the front loops are these two frontal ones, not the back ones. Um, <clears throat> Because it pulls on it more, and it started to lay more uh, lop lopsided throughout the years. She's been through a lot, but I just can't do the caviar for the jumbo, no matter how durable it is. Love discovering other guys who wear Chanel bags, and we need more of us uh, to wear them. And not that effing boy bag. Ugh, so over that one. I will never be... It will never be pretty, no matter how many times uh, he, I guess Karl Lagerfeld, adds a new feature. Haha. <laughs> or he, uh, the boy bag, adds a new feature. Well, the shade of it all. Jay Love. Love is in your name, but shade is your game. Okay, so listen. I totally get your point. When it comes to the Jumbo in particular, it's a very heavy bag. It's a very big bag. And... Um, you know, I have come to the conclusion that for several reasons, I do not wish to wear this bag crossbody. The crossbody being the stuff I told you right before, because the chain, I find it too long, so lucky you that, that for you the chain works shorter. I wouldn't see it as something where people would tell you, oh my god, it's a fake because it's shorter. No, I wish mine was shorter. Anyway, the chain. <laughs> no pun intended. But uh, as far as the loops go... Let's do this quickly. Let's put the loops in the front and see what effect uh, we obtain by doing so. Okay, now. Chanel, usually, if there are photos of this bag crossbody, the chain is always in the front. Also, when they photograph it for their website purposes, for promotion purposes, the chain is always in the front. When you wear it crossbody, you will put it across your body, and it will, you see, it? it's like right on my hip, and I would wish it to be higher here. Anyway, I love the combination of these two. I never thought about it, but I'm still going to wear them together. Anyway, okay, sorry. Back to, uh, you see, I automatically... When I wear it crossbody, I just grab it. I never let it hang. It's just, it's my instinct of conservation. It's just like, I just take my bag here immediately. That, that's how it is. Anyway, okay. So when you would, oh God, I can't. It's not in the video. Okay, let's just imagine that it's hanging tight, even though it's not. When you open it, I have a problem with the chain being in the front because as you open it, you always kind of cut in. Okay, let me take it off now again. <clears throat> All right, guys, so to me, when you open the flap, you always kind of bend into the chain somehow. So that's something I don't really like very much. That's why uh, wearing the bag like this is the best way to go if you got to choose between the front and the back, but it still isn't ideal. Now, let me tell you why the back is not good. Uh, however, I, d I don't have the issue, I mean, I guess because I don't overstuff the bag with the front chain pulling the turn lock, because once it's locked, to me, the pressure is on the back holes, the back rings, because that's where you're pulling the chain, and you're not really pulling it to the top here, you see it's, listen, it's like quite loose, it's, it's not like tagging onto it, so I don't have the problem with the turn lock, personally, 
But I do have a problem when the chain is in the back. Let's do the chain in the back. As I said before, I have a problem with the chain in the front and in the back. So to me, the jumbo is to be worn double chained. Honestly, it's not even a crossbody bag. For my personal uh, wear, I would suggest that. But let's see. Why I don't I do I don't Why I is a donut. <laughs> Why I don't like um, the chain in the back. Here, this would mean the back rings, the chain in the back. Well, I don't like the chain in the back. <sighs> now you're gonna see when you put it on, and you're opening. It kind of cuts in into the back, and it's hard to see, but. It's like, also, it's hitting you on the hip or wherever it's hitting you. And basically, I feel this chain in the back touching my body and my body putting pressure on it and hence pressuring the chain into the bag. That's why I don't uh, like to wear the chain in the back holes. So, I feel the body pushing into the chain and then hence the chain pushes into the bag and we have kilting on this bag and this is a jeans bag so it's like super soft you could like shape it as you wish and I just don't want this padding of this embroidery of these perfume bottles to get damaged uh, it's it's a tricky it's a tricky thing you, you don't want to really wear a bag like this crossbody now I go to Chanel boutiques a lot I see them promote and you know when they do their merch the merchandising, the bags are standing on, on these puppets and um, standing, you know, they're all draped and dressed uh, for the occasion. And it's always kind of, in a, even when I see on the mannequins, these bags cross body, they're laying super low. And I don't find that very aesthetical, to be perfectly honest with you. And especially, I mean, I'm considered tall for Chanel standards. So really petite ladies, like... How is that going to look? It looks super awkward. It's like you're a baby and you stole your mom's purse like to wear it to to wear, you know, to play dress up. To, not pretty, not sexy, you know what I mean? On the other hand, I know a lot of people don't like to wear these uh over the shoulder. Um but let's just do it again for the occasion cuz I'm loving it over the shoulder. And I had my issues with it and a lot of you've been telling me, "No, why should you?" And in fact, you're right. Why should we? There's no reason to have any issues with wearing this bag um, cross shoulder. I have an extra loop holding the chain, so it's hard to pull it out. But, oh, come on. There. This is the way to go, because there is no pressure on any of the rings. And when you open the bag, you see, it just, let's do it like that. It just flows. It opens and closes and there's no denting the back, there's no denting the top, there's no denting the front. And even if you leave it open, all the pressure is underneath the bag. And actually I'm super happy that I have these little uh, hinges or these extra rings of, um, of denim that protect the bag and the chains extra. So there you have it. That's my personal take on jumbos and how to wear a jumbo because honestly, it's such a beautiful bag. It's big. It ain't the most practical of bags, but a lot fits in it. Uh, I definitely am more for this little beauty here. Let's take it out of its protection pouch. And another layer of protection. And another layer of... See, this is like, I'm so obsessed with these bags. But you gotta keep them for generations to come. What generations, you ask? Don't ask. I don't know. Generations. They come and go. Look at that. Like, I'm really more prone to the mini, uh, I have to say. I mean, I love them both, but when it comes to practicality of wearing, look at that. That's a huge difference. It's basically literally two minis next to, like, side by side give one jumbo in, in length. And in thickness, that's the same, more or less. This is kind of the same. That's fascinating. Almost. Maybe half a centimeter. Or one centimeter. Half a centimeter to one centimeter uh, less wide. But uh, uh, anyway. 
Chanel obsessions, what can I tell you? There's other obsessions coming up soon in videos to come, so stay tuned because I'm on a rampage of online vintage shopping of a particular brand that I'm not going to say which one just yet because I'm looking to kind of complete a certain pattern, have enough pieces and then like present it to you guys properly. So stay tuned for that. If you have liked this video, this channel talk, let me know other questions and stuff and topics you want to talk about in the comment section down below. Don't forget to thumb up this video, especially if you want to see the Pierre Cardin exposed video produced. Uh, and share, share, share. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So guys, all this hysterical 90s and pop culture revivals and love for beautiful things is what we crave and strive for and live for because it just gives me so much positive energy and vibes. And it also, in a way, makes me say to myself, and that's what I'm saying to you guys, to never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Bye.